we are super excited to have everybody here today to learn more about workflow. We're going to go ahead and jump right in and introduce ourselves. My name is Bethany. And my name is Deepa. And we are both product marketing specialists here at Cognito Forms. We directly interact with our customers to learn more about their experience using our product and the different ways that people use it. And we, we, uh, we aim to combine the knowledge from those interviews to build workflow templates that are industry specific and really focus on some of those workflows that you might find um, that are common in those industries. And all of this is to help enable our customers to spend less time building forms from scratch. And we're here today because we really wanted to showcase all of the possibilities that Workflow offers in a bit more of an interactive way. All right, so our agenda for today, we are going to go over Workflow, just an overview of Workflow and some of the benefits that your organization can have by using Workflow features. We will go through all of the components of Workflow, so all of the bits and pieces that make Workflow what it is. Then you will get a chance to watch a demo of building a Workflow from scratch, step-by-step -step walkthrough of a common use case that most people are going to have a, at least a little bit of familiarity with. And then last but not least, we will go through some of those workflow best practices. So these are gonna be our tips that we recommend when building, managing, and testing your workflow. All right, and then if anyone is here that's new, we're super excited you're here, but we are a no-code form builder with powerful workflow capabilities to help automate your business and work more efficiently. But aside from that, we're also a lot more than that. Our main goal this past year has been to really focus on task-driven workflows, meaning driving the use of workflow by assigning entries to specific people or limiting access to certain entries or data. And so the base of our platform is driven by custom-built forms, but you gain even more value and benefits from utilizing our powerful workflow capabilities, which we're going to go ahead and jump right into right now. All right, so just an overview of workflow. It is, workflow is the sequence of steps involved in moving from the beginning to the end of a working process. So in short, it's just how work gets done. And a well-rounded workflow is going to be comprised of statuses, actions, roles, and emails, all connecting and working together to help you complete your tasks. And we're going to talk a little bit about those in just a moment. And then why did we create Workflow? Basically, we believe in empowering anyone, regardless of technical background, to meaningfully engage in collaboration around their data to achieve their goals. So we know that every person plays their part in many different processes, and you're performing different tasks at different times, using and updating information that you're responsible for. And you're doing all this so that your team can achieve your goals successfully. So workflow, our, our goal with workflow has really been to enable anyone to be able to achieve their goals successfully and efficiently. All right, some of those benefits of workflow. First, you can see increased operational efficiency. So this is possible because you're creating a standardized workflow that is built into the form and it's consistent every time it takes place. It goes through those same steps, no matter what. And really this helps reduce room for delays or missed steps and ensures that your workflow proceeds as planned. And then next, you can also see the simplifying of delegation of tasks. So with the logic built into the form, it can automatically assign entries to staff members. So you no longer need to take time out of your day to delegate those tasks yourself. And when roles and associated tasks are added, a user can know exactly how to access and complete their work. It can also help reduce manual labor and increase automation. So it really helps you focus more on digitizing some of those daily tasks and 
reducing busy work for you and your employees. You can configure workflow to notify individuals of updates as soon as they're completed, meaning that you don't need to do that yourself. And really automating some of those repetitive tasks is, is essentially going to help you focus on work that's meaningful to you instead of doing some of those repetitive things, um, maybe that take your time away from other work. And then last but not least, uh, workflow helps create better alignment within your team. So by centralizing the location of your data and where your work gets done, it can help align your whole team and let individuals know what they need to do and where it is. So everyone's remaining on the same page without being uncertain on what needs done or where something is. It's all just right there. And then we would not be able to talk about workflow without mentioning our powerful conditional logic because it, it really is the backbone of workflow. And conditional logic is essentially the act of setting conditions or rules that affect the outcome of a process. Different actions in your workflow can occur based on whether certain conditions are met. And this really helps enable you to send people on unique paths in your forms. So like the example you see on your screen, you can show or hide certain fields from people. So you can see that if someone answers no, that they aren't attending, nothing happens. But if they answer yes, an additional question pops up for them to answer. You can also do things like sending unique emails depending on a response. So you might want one email to send if a, a job candidate is approved versus if they're denied. And you could also allow the action buttons, which in this example is the submit button, and we'll get more into that, but you can allow those to be available to certain roles. So you might want your internal team to see an approve button, but you don't want your candidate to see that button. You just want them to see submit or apply or whatever that button is. So there's, there's a lot of different reasons why conditional logic really is the core component of workflow. Now, let's go over the different components that make workflow what it is. Actions. Workflow actions are the buttons on your form that a user can select to perform a certain task, such as submitting an application, or approving a PTO request. Actions enable you to achieve many things in your workflow. An action can display as a confirmation message or send an email, among many other things. Essentially, actions are the catalysts that move your workflow along. Without them, you wouldn't be able to proceed to the next step in your workflow process. Workflow statuses are the steps within your workflow. They essentially help you track the progress of each entry as different entries can be at different stages at any time. The different colors next to each of the entries shown on the screen here signify that they are in different stages of the workflow. And as a quick note, when we mention the word entry, we're referring to each individual submission. As shown on the image of the entries page, each submission is considered an entry. So numbers 20, 17, 14, these are all different entries. Roles are the different functions that an individual involved in your workflow can have. A different role should be assigned for each function within your workflow. For example, in an expense report workflow, you might have 10 different managers at your company, but you would only need one manager role since all the managers would be performing the same task. If two of the managers have different tasks to complete though, then you would want them to have separate roles. It's best not to attach the concept of a role to one specific person because different people can potentially perform the same role as highlighted by the example I just gave. We recommend thinking of a role as a purpose that a person can have when involved in this process. A workflow within Cognito Forms will include one public role and one internal role by default. 
any additional roles added would be of the other type. And for those of you feeling extra ambitious, please keep in mind that you can only create a maximum of, maximum of 20 roles per form. And again, tying this all back to the con concept of conditional logic, you can hide or make certain fields visible based on the role since different roles have different tasks to complete. The connection of actions and statuses. Actions often have a status attached to them. For example, when submit is clicked, it automatically changes the entry status from incomplete to submitted. The connection of actions and statuses are essentially what move the workflow process along. When creating new actions, you will be asked to include what status you'd like the entry to move to next, as shown on the screen here. For the submit action, you're changing the status to pending initial review. You can allow certain actions to only be available during certain statuses. And this is accomplished using, take a guess, the conditional logic capabilities we've previously touched on. The connection of roles, statuses, and actions together are what allow you to build custom workflows with unique form experiences for everyone involved. Although this can initially feel a bit daunting to wrap your head around, we're here to help break it down for you. Actions and statuses can help guide the information a certain role can see on the form. For example, if the entry status is incomplete, one role might be able to input their details and submit the form, while another role might not be able to see those fields or input any information at all. Similarly, you can make action buttons only available to certain roles. For example, the manager role could have approve and deny action buttons available when they access the entry, but someone in the employee role, for example, would not be able to see those buttons or take those actions, but they might have their own action buttons available for them to see. Custom email notifications are tied to the action buttons on your form, such as submit, approve, or deny. These are set up within the settings for each action. When an action button is clicked, it automatically triggers the email to be sent out. You can use emails to send confirmations for entry submissions, notify someone of a form status change, and invite others to open the form and notify them that their tasks are ready to be completed. Email content can be easily customized to include things such as entry details, payment information, or uploaded files and documents. In short, email notifications are used to notify the different people in your workflow that an update has been made and that their task is ready to be completed. Workflow link sharing. Workflow links are what help create different views in the form depending on the role viewing the entry. They are unique links that help control which information is available to which role. For example, an employee would see a view with empty fields that they can populate on a PTO request form, whereas the manager would see a read-only version of that along with their own actions to either approve or deny the request. Both views are unique to the role the view is intended for and can be set up using conditional logic. When someone is sent a workflow link, they can access the entry and perform the actions depending on the role the link was designated for. For example, a manager would receive an email with the manager workflow sharing link. And when sending out those emails, you would choose manager as the role you'd want the email to be sent out as. As you automate email notifications across your workflow, you'll find that you can easily send a workflow link with the right data to the right person at the right time. Assigned entry views is a new feature that allows you to create unique views of the entries page for different roles. In this example, 
you can see that the coordinator has access to both the all entries view and the self nominations view. The judge can access the for review view and would only see the entries in that one view. These entries can be easily created on the entries page. You can choose to customize the entry views not only by filtering the actual entries that you want in each view, but also by customizing the specific columns of data that are included. Circling back to the example on this slide, because you would want to ensure that the judge's process is as unbiased as possible, in the for review section, you can choose to omit the column with the candidate's name so the judges would not be able to see that. Workflow Tasks is a new feature that we have coming soon for all of you. This feature gives you the ability to immediately see which entries need your attention. It takes an entry view on the entries page and elevates it so that you can see it as a task that needs to be completed, or so that you can set it up as a task that needs to be completed for another user in your organization. Each user will only be able to see the individual tasks assigned to them and no one else's. Please keep your eyes peeled for the release of this feature sometime in the next few months. Okay, we are now going to look at a workflow. We're going to get into the demo and build a workflow from scratch. So we really recommend focusing completely on what we're doing. And then if you want to come back and rewatch it and build alongside us, um, we really just think it's easier to create a workflow once you've fully digested the full process. Okay, so the example that we're going to build in the demo is an expense report. This is basically let's just go through like the basic rundown of what's going to happen in the workflow. So the employee will submit their expense report. And once it's submitted, an email goes to the manager to approve or deny that expense report. The manager can then come in and approve or deny it. And if it is denied, an email goes to the employee letting them know. But if it's approved, an email would go to the accounting role letting them know that they need to act further. So then that accounting role can come in, mark the budget that it is being, the expense is being paid from, and then use the pay action. And that pay action would then change the entry to be marked as complete. And so now that the entry is marked as complete, the staff that access entries, if they see this particular entry, it is completed. And this lets them know that no other work needs to be done on it. It's just, it's completed. So let's go ahead and get right into our demo. When you first open the form in the build page, you'll be taken to the form settings section. We've already added a few of the basic fields for the sake of time, but you would need to start by adding those fields yourself. You'll notice that when we go to the workflow settings section, you can see there are only two statuses, two actions, and two roles. This is the default view for any new forms created, so we'll need to modify and add to this in order to create a custom workflow. The first thing I want to set up are the roles of the people or functions involved in the workflow. For our expense report scenario, I will need a role for an employee, manager, and accounting. The public role is the person completing the form or initiating the workflow. In this case, it would be the employee, so I'm going to change the name of it to employee. The internal role can be renamed to manager, and any additional roles you add here are considered of the type other. Here, we'll be adding an other role for accounting. Now that we have our roles set up, let's think about the actions and statuses that we need throughout the process. Creating a basic diagram of the workflow prior to building it out can be helpful. As you can see, the diagram we made will now help us decide on the actions and statuses we need for the rest of our workflow. We already have a submit action and status, so we need to think about what happens after this. According to the diagram we made, the next person involved in the workflow would be the manager. They would need to take action to approve or deny the expense report that was submitted. 
So let's go ahead and make an approved status and an approve action button along with a denied status and a deny action button. The next person involved in the workflow after an expense has been approved by a manager would be accounting. If the manager approves the expense, then only will accounting be involved. Once they decide the budget category and pay the expense out, the workflow will be complete. So let's go ahead and name this last status completed. In order for them to initiate that it's been paid, they'll need a pay action button. And just as a quick note, your status names do not have to be the past tense of your action names. You can name it anything you want. You also might notice the update button is not connected to any statuses. This is because it is essentially meant to save changes made to the form without impacting the status of the workflow. Before we continue, I need to make sure only the accounting team has access to this internal updates section. I'm going to click on this section and in the settings you'll see show this field and read only conditional logic. I'm going to make this section only visible to the accounting role while in the approved or completed status. Then I want the accounting role to not be able to make changes to the entry after it's been paid out. So I'll add a read only condition as well. This will be when the role is accounting and in completed status. All right, now that we have the form and the workflow steps ready to go, we need to go in and make sure we have the correct conditional logic on the actions and the correct email notifications set up to help move the process along appropriately. First, let's look at the submit button. We want to make sure that only the employee role has access to this button and only when it's in the incomplete status. As another quick note, for role indicates that this role will always have access to this button no matter what the status or other conditions may be. Since we want to limit the action by both role and status, we're going to use the when option. We'll select entry.role is employee and then entry.status is incomplete. So after it is submitted, this button will no longer be available on this particular entry. Let's also quickly double check that the correct status is connected to this action button. And then we need to think about the emails going out when this action button is clicked. We'd first need the manager to receive an email notifying them that an expense is ready to be reviewed. We'll make sure the email is going to the correct email address. And in this case, we're just going to use ours for all of them. And it has their roles shared workflow link so they can access the entry and make the updates needed for their role. In addition to notifying the manager, we want the employee to receive a confirmation email. For the confirmation email, we can pull in the email field to automatically be sent to the employee's email address. But something we'd like to do is not even need the employee to enter their email every time they submit an expense report. As you can see in the preview mode here, employees currently need to type in their name and email address every single time. If your employees are users in your Cognito Forms organization, something you can do to automate this would be to use calculations for entry.user.name and entry.user.email which will automatically pull in the user's name and email address if they're logged into Cognito Forms.
In the case of this form, we are assuming your employees are users in your org, which is why this would work. Now let's check our approve action. We'll first make sure this action is only available to the manager role while in the submitted status. Next, we'll double check that this action is moving the entry into the correct status. Once we have that set up, we'll need to create an email going to the accounting team to notify them that an expense needs to be paid. We'll add their email address, change the content in the email, and add their roles workflow link. Remember, this workflow link is different from the other roles, so they'll see the content they need to see, while other roles will see something different. Next, let's set up the deny action. This action should only be available to the manager and in the submitted status, just like the approve button. Both action buttons would show up for the manager at the same time. Let's also quickly double check that the correct status is connected to this action. Now moving on to the emails for this action, remember this one is not sending an email to accounting like the approve action did. Instead, we'll have an email sent to the employee letting them know their expense was denied. Accounting will not need to be involved in the workflow if the expense is denied. Let's pull in the employee's email address again and change the content of the message. We don't need to add any workflow links to this email since the employee won't be able to change anything. This is something you could do if you wanted to though. Lastly, let's look at the pay action. This action should only be available to the accounting role while in the approved status. This action should be connected to the completed status. Then we'll want an email to go to the employee notifying them that their expense was paid. We'll pull in their email address and change the content of the email. Again, no workflow link is needed here. Another thing to note is that we'll want to ensure the fields that were inputted by the employee are made read-only for the other roles. This is so that the manager or accounting team does not accidentally change any of those fields. Because we have all the employee fields in a section, we can simply make this entire section read-only for the manager and accounting roles. Had we not had these fields in a section, then we would have to go individually through each field to make them read only for these roles one at a time. Now that we have the form and the workflow completely set up, let's look at what we can do in the entries page with assigned entry views to further customize our workflow and how we get work done. You'll notice the all entries entry view is automatically created and assigned to whatever that internal role was. In this case, we renamed internal to manager so they have access to this. If we wanted to add an entry view for the accounting team to see approved expenses, we'll click New View and then I want to name it Pending Payment since these entries would be any that are approved but not yet paid. I'm going to assign it to the accounting role so this view is specifically for those in the role. Don't forget to filter the entries to the status and save your changes. If you're interested in learning more about setting up assigned entry views and then ensuring your Cognito Forms users in your organization can see those views assigned to them, you can read more about this on our support page. At this point, we would typically test the workflow using preview mode. In preview, you can toggle between roles and statuses to see what the form looks like and how it functions. For the sake of time, we're going to skip this step, but we recommend testing your form in preview as you build it or before testing with the public link. Now let's go ahead and look at the workflow happening with the public link and including those emails that we set up. Remember, I set up the emails to be sent to my email address, so I'll get the emails of all the roles. 
You would want to make these more specific for a real workflow being used, but for testing purposes, this works great. We'll go ahead and start with the public link and fill out the form as an employee submitting an expense. Notice it recognizes who I am when I'm completing it. This is because I'm logged into Cognito Forms and a part of this organization. Now I'll go ahead and add the details for my expense and then submit the form. Let's open my inbox and see what was received. I got an email as the employee confirming the expense submission and an email as the manager notifying me of changes that need to be made. I can click this workflow button to access this specific entry and make changes, or I can log into Cognito Forms, access the entries page of this form, and make changes on the entry here. This is helpful if you have multiple entries to take action on at once. I'm gonna go ahead and approve this expense and then check my inbox for an email dedicated for the accounting role. When I open the email, I see a workflow link that I can access the entry. Let's do it that way instead of the entries page just so you can see what that looks like. I click on the button and now I have a section for me to designate the budget this expense is for and then I click the pay button. Now I got an email for the employee letting them know it's been paid and now the workflow is complete. Remember, as you test your workflow like this, you'll likely have small adjustments that need to be made. We like to test it this way until we can go through every possible route of the workflow with no errors before sharing the live form link with anyone. And that concludes our demo. Now that we've gone through a full demo and built a workflow for you all, let's now go over a few of our best practices when creating and testing your workflow. While workflow automation is extremely powerful, it unfortunately is not a magic wand. We recommend mapping out the steps in your process before building the workflow in order to save time and make it easier for you. Even if you don't have your entire process fully planned out, we recommend at least identifying the roles or people involved in the process. In addition, it'll always be easier when you have a basic flow and end goal in mind. Here are some best practices we recommend prior to building your workflow. Number one, if possible, list out all the tasks of your process that need to be completed as well as the end goal. Number two, map out the possible routes that could be taken in the workflow. You will find that you, you may want to update or change these routes as you start building the actual workflow within the platform, which is completely normal. We also find ourselves updating our steps and processes as we build it time and time again. Number three, identify the specific points where an action must be taken by someone in order to move the process along. In our workflow demo, for example, an example of this would be when the employee submits their expense report or when the manager approves it. Locating these points will help you decide when you need to have action buttons and what statuses you will need to create in conjunction with those actions. You'll also gain a better grasp of where emails or, or workflow links might be necessary within your workflow. during and after building your workflow. The biggest thing we recommend after setting up your workflow is to test it. You can begin by double checking that the conditional logic you've set up for any roles, statuses, and actions is correct. You'll also want to take a quick look to ensure that all the actions are connected to the right statuses so that your workflow progresses as expected. Next, we suggest double checking that all your emails are being sent to the correct individuals and have the right conditional logic attached. Ensure that all workflow links are linked to the correct role and being shared as needed within your workflow. Next, 
walk through the workflow in preview mode on the build page to be sure everything works as expected. Some common things that typically need to be double checked are fields showing up for the public role when they should only be showing up for internal roles, fields needing to be made read only for internal roles so that they can't make changes to information submitted by a public user, and actions showing up for roles that they shouldn't be, such as an action meant for the manager, approve or deny, for example, showing up for an employee. And last but not least, test your workflow using the public link. Run through the workflow and fill out the form as if you were each user by submitting real test entries and going through each step. As we showed in the demo, you can do this by adding your own email in the to section for each email notification so that you can see the emails in your inbox and verify each workflow link. We also have a workflow pre-launch checklist available in our support documentation that you can use when building and testing out your own workflow. You can click the link in the pop-up notification on your screen to access it now. And thank you so much. That wraps up our webinar for today. We appreciate each and each and every one of you for taking the time out of your day and spending it here with us. We thoroughly enjoyed being able to share more about our product with you. We've also created a feedback survey and would greatly appreciate it if you could fill it out when you get the chance. You should see it in your inbox sometime within the next couple of days, and it shouldn't take you more any more than five to 10 minutes to complete. We're now going to walk through a list of questions that we are most commonly asked about workflows. Okay. Um, so the first question we have is how many roles can I have? And that the answer to that question is you can have a maximum of 20 roles per form. You can also only have a maximum of 20 actions and statuses, but you can have an unlimited number of email notifications. So per form, you'll want to keep it, you want to keep your roles 20 and less, 20 and below. Um, the next question we have is how do you assign a user to a role? This is easy, and this can be done by going to the workflow settings within the build page, selecting role one of the options on the workflow settings, and then choosing the specific role you'd like to assign, and then selecting the user to assign to that role. It's much more clear when you're on the build page and following along, but once you're able to assign a user to a specific role, with that role assignment, you can give users access to specific entry views assigned to that role. So they would be able to go to the entries page and only see the entry views that for the role that they were assigned to, which is convenient when you're trying to limit who sees what sort of information everywhere. And the next question we have is, can I restrict the view of the entries somehow for confidential purposes? And yes, in line with the previous question, you can use the filter function on the entries page to filter down entries based on the entry status or payment status. You can also filter by keyword using the advanced filter option on the entries page for more filtering down on for more filtering down for specific criteria. The advanced filter allows you to use conditional logic as well to filter based on specific criteria. And this allows you to, as we mentioned in the webinar, you can, for a judge, for example, in which you want to have a bias-free process, you can easily omit the name category showing up for their um, assigned entry view so they wouldn't see that at all and they would just see the information. So it's easy to be able to um, restrict what you want your different users to see with the assigned entry views feature that we have. And on that note, don't forget to save your interviews because if you filter it and you forget to save it, it won't be there. <laughs> um, okay, so another question that we get is, do you have to be a user in order to be assigned to a role? So further clarification on that, a user is like anyone that is a part of your organization in Cognito Forms, whereas a role is more what we talked about in the webinar, those different functions throughout a workflow. 
Um, and a similar question was asked, does this require someone to have the app installed or log in online? So when you are assigning someone to a role, if you're assigning them to the public role, they don't need to be a user in the organization. However, other roles they would need to be and anyone that's going to access the entries page, hence those like uh, role, those role assigned entry views, they will need to be a user in your org. And yeah, you would have to be a user in order to access those entry views and take part in the workflow past that. Um, another question we have, can the submit button send an email of the submission to multiple people, including non-users in Cognito Forms? Yes, you can send the emails based on the action up to eight, to up to eight different email addresses. So on that one email, you can have up to eight specific email addresses in the to section. And then another question we have, is there a way to quickly duplicate an email? And currently this is not an available feature, but this is something we can pass on to our product team to let them know it could be possible down the road. It'd be very cool to have that. So yes. hopefully very soon. Um, one of another, another question we get commonly asked about workflows is how do we send, how do we resend workflow links if the user is external and lost the original link? Or also how can I man, manually share a workflow link if I don't want to do it through an actual workflow? So you can manually share a workflow link from the entries page. And so you just, once you navigate to the entries page and after opening and selecting the entry, you like to share with someone, click the share option at the top of the entry. It'll be one of the options and you can click on that and specify what the link type, specify the link type you want it to be. You'll have the option to send an email with the link to someone specific, or you can simply copy the link and share it with them yourself. So there are options to send links externally or separately from within, from outside of within the workflow itself. And if you want more information on this, our user guides have it all written down. So please feel free to visit our website and support documentation to learn more on that. And another question we have is, are there templates for workflows or templates which use workflows? And yes, the yeah, answer is yes. We have many templates with varying levels of workflow components complexity available on our website for you to access. And you can simply just go to cognitoforms.com slash templates slash workflow dash automation, and it will take you there. But it's also easy to find on your own if you just Google search it and um, come up with it. And Bethany and I myself have built a lot of these templates with workflow. So there are many available. Um, and hopefully it'll be of use for you throughout your workflow journey as well. And in addition to that, if you had your own templates that you've created or own forms that you've built, you can also create um, template links to share with others with your own forms. So all you would need to do is once you've created your form and if that's something you wanna share with someone, you simply go to the build page. Um, you wanna enable the share as template option under form settings. And once you've turned that on, you'll receive a template link that you can easily distribute and share with anyone. Um, you can just copy the link and send it however is easiest for you. And in order to learn more about how to do this or see it on paper, you can easily, of course, visit our user guides to learn more. And another commonly asked question is, can you control who sees specific views within your organ organization? For example, if you wanna give HR review access to the form, and you only want them to see the relevant information for eight, for the HR view instead of something an, admis, an administrator, for example, would see. Um, but the answer to that is yes, there is a way to do this, but in a limited way by setting a user's permission for, for a form or a folder of forms. You could essentially use the assigned entry views feature we've previously touched on um, and assign them to that role in the role dialog and then set up an entry view for that role. We have a feature that works. We have a feature in the works that's going to be coming out 
hopefully very soon, that will take this one step further for you. And that's going to be, um, and that'll hopefully take it one step further. This will make the entry view only display the entry shared with a specific user accessing them. So it, the difference would be you could create entry views for a role. And we will, will also, this new feature will allow you to take a specific entry and share it with only one individual as well. So hopefully by releasing that feature, it'll give you more control and power over your forms and who sees what within your organization. Um, but yes, that is currently how you would um, control who sees what on the entries page. Another question is on a multi-page form, is it possible for the form to automatically save when you click next and go to the next page? And the answer to that is no, the save button would need to be used in order to save an entry as it's being filled out. We do not have, um, it, the form does not automatically save as you go to the next page. Um, that could be something we mentioned to our product team, though. And then in the email for the submit action, there's an option to attach and checkmark uploaded files. So this would be in the build page when you are adding the emails, like building that into your workflow. And this person wants to know if it can be drilled down to attach a specific uploaded file. And at the moment, it is all uploaded files or none. So if you have five uploaded files on your form, like the user upload or whoever's filling out the form uploads five files. If you check um, uploaded files, it will include all of them. It, we don't have the option currently to select different ones, but we will pass this along to our team. And then also after a form is submitted, can a user update the customer's entry? So by default, yes, depending, depending on permissions. So if they're sent a workflow link, by default, yes, um, the, the fields would be editable as long as they're able to view those fields. But you can make the entire form read only for mm -hmm. the internal role or whatever role is maybe reviewing it. Um, or you can make certain fields read only, whatever you want there. You could take this a step further and add conditions to which statuses you want the form to be read only on. So um, I believe in our example, the accounting role, it was read only in the completed status, but not in the um, pending payment status, for example. Now, if they're accessing these entries from the entries page and they're a user in your org, if they have reviewer access, or limit, limited access, which they wouldn't be able to view it at all, but reviewer access, they would not be able to edit anything. Now an editor would be able to. But, um, so there's different ways that it could go, but essentially, yes, this is possible. There's a couple different ways that it can be done. And our user guides and customer success team is super, super helpful. So check those out to learn a little bit more on how to set that up. Definitely. And at any point, again, um, if you have any questions about workflow or setting up a specific workflow for your organization or a specific niche situation, please definitely reach out to our customer support team. They are wonderful, and I'm sure your questions will get asked, uh, answered very quickly. Um, the next question we have is, can we schedule or automate downloading slash exporting PDFs? Currently, although a great a great ask and a great feature that we can, again, take back to our product team, it's impossible to schedule or automatically download generated documents or such as PDFs from inside Cognito Forms. You can, however, export them individually or in bulk from the entries page or attach them to your notification emails. Um, so that is something we can definitely put in note to the product team for because I think it would be extremely useful. And honestly, if you're looking for something a little less hands-on, 
and have the capability to do so, we recommend setting up a data integration. Um, we offer several options such as Microsoft Power Automate, Zapier, Make, and multiple JSON webhooks if you're familiar with those. Um, so that's also something to look into if you have more additional um, automated tasks you'd like to have completed. And um, another question we get commonly asked is to make it faster for people to select their manager, for example, or make a selection, can you add lookup fields so that someone can select their manager from a list? So essentially, I think, or also in addition, how do you link the manager that was selected to the workflow in your form? So first of all, I think it's just asking if there's a way to use lookups to instead of having a manager type in their name or someone type in a manager's name, just use a lookup to pull in from another form and have a drop down or select option to just click a name. And yes, you can do this using our lookup fields option. The short explanation of this would be to simply add a lookup field on your current form and connect that to a previously made lookup form. Then you can auto populate that manager's email address um, by adding a default value calculation equal to the email field on your lookup form. And if you need more, uh, of course, this all might be a lot right now. So if you need more specific information on how exactly to set this up or how to do this, you can read about lookups in our support content, which highlights the different ways you can pull content in. Or you can also, of course, just reach out to our customer success team and they would be more than happy to assist you. And the final question we have today is, is there a way to get a copy of the unique workflow links to get a copy of any of the, your unique workflow links after a form has already been submitted? Um, and unfortunately, there's not currently a way to do this, but you can view the links that are shared with the individuals in your workflow by going to the entries page, selecting the specific entry, and then clicking share up top. And then you'll be able to see a list of the people with what role um, there and who was shared what. So while um, you're not able to get the workflow link after something has already been submitted, you can see who it was shared with in order to track um, anything you might need to do in that area. But in that same location, you can generate a new one. Like I think we mentioned that yeah. a little bit earlier. Um, so you can't see the exact link, but you can see who it was shared with and you can make a new one. So that should help most um, cases there. Definitely. And that wraps up our webinar and Q&A session for today. Um, once again, we thank you all for joining us and we appreciate um, you being such committed members of our platform and we hope to keep growing and bringing you more and more features um, as the years go on. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And reach out to our customer success team if you need any assistance with building a workflow. All right. Have a good day. Bye, everyone. Bye.